When scientists opened China's sample return capsule from the far side of the moon, they expected ancient dust, shattered rock, and the familiar debris of countless meteor impacts. Instead, hidden inside those grains was something fragile, rare, and older than the moon itself, something no one believed could survive on its surface, a microscopic fragment that shouldn't be there, yet somehow is. And the moment it was identified, Scientists realized they were looking at a clue from a time before the planets even existed. That discovery didn't just raise questions, it opened a door no one expected to find on the far side of the moon. To understand why this moment matters, we need to travel back, both in time and across space, to a region of the moon that humanity had never reached until a few years ago. The far side may be illuminated by the sun, just like the near side, but from Earth, it's permanently out of view. For billions of years, it faced away from us, hidden not by darkness, but by geometry. When the first spacecraft took pictures of it in the 1960s, scientists immediately noticed something striking. The far side wasn't smooth and familiar like the face we see from Earth. It was rugged, ancient, covered with craters stacked on top of craters, each one a frozen moment from the violent early days of the solar system. And as strange as it sounds, that chaos made the far side scientifically priceless. Unlike Earth, the moon has no atmosphere, no weather, and no tectonic activity to erase its history. Everything that hits the moon stays there, the surface records impacts dating back more than 4 billion years, and the far side is even older and less altered than the near side, which was resurfaced in places by ancient lava flows. But, for decades, landing there was almost impossible. The moon blocks radio signals, making direct communication from the far side impossible without a relay satellite in deep space. That single barrier kept the World Space Agencies away. China decided to challenge that barrier. In 2019, they launched Chui Chao, a relay satellite placed into a halo orbit beyond the moon. It created the first ever communication bridge to the far side. Soon after, the Chang'e 4 lander touched down, becoming the first spacecraft in history to operate on that hidden hemisphere. It wasn't just a milestone, it was a declaration. The far side was no longer beyond reach. But Chang'e 4 was only the beginning. China had a far more ambitious mission in mind, one no nation had ever attempted, a mission that would not just land on the far side, but bring something back from it. That mission became Chang'e 6. When Chang'e 6 launched in 2024, its target was chosen for maximum scientific return. The south edge of Apollo Crater, located inside the South Pole Aitken Basin. This basin is enormous, one of the largest known impact structures in the solar system. Some scientists even suspect the impact that created it may have excavated material from deep beneath the lunar crust. If any region of the moon held untouched ancient material, this was the place. Chang'e 6 touched down on June 1, 2024. The lander extended its robotic arm, scooping dust and drilling below the surface. Each sample was sealed inside a container barely larger than a fist. Once full, the ascent module lifted off the surface, climbed into lunar orbit, docked with the return spacecraft, and began the journey home. When the capsule finally reached Earth and was opened, scientists immediately began analyzing the material. They expected the soil to be old, and it was. Some grains dated back billions of years. But then came the surprise. Mixed inside the lunar dust were particles unlike anything native to the moon. They were fragments of carbonaceous chondrites, the ancient meteorites in the solar system. These meteorites formed before Earth, before the Moon, before any of the planets had finished taking shape. They contain hydrated minerals that lock away water. They contain carbon compounds that are essential building blocks for life. 
but they're also extremely delicate. On Earth, almost all of them burn up in the atmosphere. Only a few survive, and even then, they're usually altered or broken. Finding them on the moon was unexpected. Finding them on the far side, intact, was astonishing. The moon offers no gentle landing. There is no air resistance to slow an incoming meteor. Impacts happen at enormous speeds, usually vaporizing or melting the projectile completely. Fragile carbonaceous chondrites should shatter or disappear upon impact, yet a microscopic fragment of one survived, buried in the soil collected by Chang'e 6. Scientists double-checked everything. Could the fragments be contamination from Earth? No. The isotopic signatures didn't match. Could they be local lunar minerals misidentified? Again, no. The chemical ratios were unmistakable. These grains came from an ancient asteroid that struck the moon billions of years ago. So the question became, how did such fragile material survive? There are several hypotheses. One possibility is that the impact occurred at a lower velocity than typical lunar collisions. Another is that the chondrite broke apart before hitting the surface, reducing the intensity of the impact. A third idea is that the fragments were preserved within rapidly cooling melt, encasing them before they could fully vaporize. None of these scenarios are common, but Chang'e 6 proved that rare conditions can leave behind survivors. This discovery matters for a simple but profound reason. The moon preserves history that Earth cannot. Our planet is alive, geologically speaking. Plate tectonics recycle crust, erosion grinds mountains into dust, oceans reshape continents. Almost nothing from Earth's earliest era survived, but the moon kept everything. Every impactor, every grain of dust, every fragment from a world long gone remains locked in its soil. And now the far side, older, quieter, less disturbed, appears to hold an even richer archive than scientists expected. As researchers examined the samples in more detail, more surprises appeared. Some mineral grains showed structures from high-energy impacts unlike any previously studied. Others revealed unusual compositions that might reflect deep lunar material stirred up by ancient collisions. There were melt droplets, glass beads, and fragments of minerals that could help reconstruct the geological history of the far side with far greater precision. But the carbonaceous chondrite fragments were the breakthrough, not because they were large, they were microscopic, but because they represented a category of material scientists never thought they would find preserved on the moon's surface. And that changes the stakes. These fragments may help reveal how water and organic compounds spread across the early solar system. They could help answer one of the biggest questions in planetary science. How did Earth get its water? If fragments like these were common on the moon billions of years ago, then impacts on Earth could have delivered the raw ingredients life needed to begin. The far side of the moon might be holding the evidence Earth has long since lost. And that realization creates a new kind of urgency. If a tiny sample of lunar soil, less than 2 kilograms, contains meteorite fragments this rare, what else could be hidden beneath the surface? What might we find by drilling deeper, by sampling other locations, by exploring more of the South Pole Aitken Basin? The answers might reshape not just lunar science, but our understanding of the entire early solar system. This brings us to the next major wave of exploration. China's lunar roadmap continues with Chang'e 7, expected to launch in 2026. It will explore the lunar south pole, searching for water ice buried in permanently shadowed craters. After that comes Chang'e 8 in 2028, which will test technologies for using lunar soil to build structures. Together, these missions lay the groundwork for a future research station on the moon's surface sometime in the 2030s. Meanwhile, NASA's Artemis program is moving toward its own return to the moon, with the South Pole as its target. 
Although timelines have shifted, the long-term goal remains the same. Build a sustainable presence on the lunar surface and open the door to human exploration deeper into the solar system. But regardless of the pace, the Chang'e 6 discovery has put a spotlight on the far side of the moon like never before. It's not just a scientific curiosity, it's becoming the next major frontier. Each sample may contain fragments of a world that vanished billions of years ago. Each grain may hold clues about the chemistry that existed before the planets were fully formed. Each discovery brings us closer to understanding the violent, evolving environment in which Earth itself was born. Scientists are now asking questions they never expected to ask. If a fragile meteorite fragment can survive there, what else has survived?